So I'm a biological farmer. Everyone knows the difference between organic and biological farming. Um, I, I, I love uh, organic farmers. I aspire to be an organic farmer. But the difference between organic and biological is bi organic farmers tell you what you can't do and biological farming tells you what you can do. Uh, so I've read anyway. I come up here in 1995 from Sydney. I played a, 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 my first start of my career as a professional rugby league player. Then I joined the police service and I come up here as a police officer in 95. Um, bought a little farm out at Tatum, which is south of, between here and Casino. And it was a wonderful little 20, 25 acres, I forget now. And we decided that we'd go into pecan farming after some research. We built a beautiful home on it. My wife and four kids, that's where we were going to stay. That's where we were going to live until I come across this farm, and, uh, uh, which was uh, 150 acres on the, on the uh, Wilson River, just in, near Lismore, which was running at about one quarter of its potential. So I went home and told my wife, we're selling up and we're buying this farm, we're gonna live in a shed for three years till we build a house, and she cried her eyes out. But I sold one of my kidneys and we bought the farm, <laughs> and, uh, and the first thing I said to the old farmer, who I have a lot of respect for, who still lives next door to the farm, um, uh, what was your fertilising regime? <clears throat> Bearing in mind, I've gone from the hobby farm, which we could retire on, which we almost owned, all these sort of things, to something we had to pay a fortune for. So I had to get really serious about farming. That's what it looks like now. But when we first bought the farm, I asked the... Um, Previous, a previous owner, what's your fertilising regime? He said, MP and K, so many pounds per diameter of uh, tree. I, and we all know N, for N we use nitrogen, we use urea. For P, phosphorus, we used, he used uh, um, whatever, was, uh, whatever was the cheapest, either single super or triple super. And for K, potassium, he used muriated potash. Now, I'd never used urea before, but when I started putting it out, it really burnt my hands. And I wonder what the hell's going on here. Well, I read on the bag it said 46% nitrogen, and I always wonder what the other 54% is in that bag. I don't know. But phosphorus, uh, single super or triple super, well, we're on uh, iron, uh, heavy red soils, which is really high in iron. And I've learnt that uh, the, the iron mixes with the phosphate, becomes iron phosphate, and within two, between two, and two hours and two days, the the phosphorus locks up and the tree can't get it anyway. Uh, and potassium, muriate of potash, uh, uh, we he used is a potassium chloride. I'm told chloride kills the bugs because we used to put it in our pool in the house that we used to have um, to kill the bugs. So not only that, I've also found out that up north in the wet season, they put this muriate of potash on the soils, on the, on the roads to harden them up so that they can drive through the soils in the wet season. But the worst possible thing that we were, do, what we were doing on this, soil, on this farm, and I'll just get through. There's our nursery. Um, oh, I must have missed the, that's something I made. That's an aerator. These are my favorite tools. Uh, we used to herbicide spray three meters out from the trunk of the tree, each side of the trunk of the tree. And when I, and when I bought the farm, the old fellow, I said, how often do you do this? He said, oh, we do it every six weeks. And he said, oh, just wait till the, Little weeds start sticking their heads up out of that soil. He said, that's the time to hit them with these herbicide sprays. Uh, herbicide, which we use standard glyphosate at, at uh, the normal rate, six, every six weeks. So he'd done this for 30 years. It's about stopping doing all the bad things and starting to do some of the damn good things to the, to the farm. I use what Gary Zimmer says, what makes your farm better next year? And that's our uh, philosophy on our farm. We try not to do anything on our farm that uh, will make the farm worse. So our son standing underneath a pecan nut tree, all the little nuts on the ground, but there you can see, you can see the herbicide strips. So you can see the, the damage that we used to do with herbicide sprays. That's some of the bugs that we have in our, on our farm on our trees called longer horn beetle. We used to chop them out with a chainsaw and we, until we realised that we were doing more damage to the trees than the damn bugs were doing. We do have some fungal problems. that We, uh, we don't use fungicides on our farm. I refuse to use them. I use a biological control. I use a, a, a fungi called trichoderma. That is a predatory fungi. We spray that all out over our trees and it eats our <coughs> common pest uh, called anthracnose. And that's my farm. No one told me that it went six foot underwater every year. So whatever we put on that farm could end up down at Ballina 
So we have to be very careful with our fertilisers and we have to be very farm friendly. Now, after gaining some knowledge, I haven't put urea on the farm for five or six years. We use an azotobacter microbe to suck the nitrogen out of the sky. And we, instead of using 5,000 bucks a year for urea, it now costs us $500 a year to buy that microbe. For phosphorus, I use uh, guanos along with mycorrhizal fungi to activate. I got over 100 times more phosphorus locked up in the soil thanks to my old bloke I bought the farm off putting on phosphorus. I got a over 100 times more phosphorus locked up in the soil than I actually need to grow the trees. So I'm using mycorrhizal fungi and other uh, bacteria and legumes to try and um, get the soil into use and make it uh, available, sorry, get the phosphorus into use, make it available for the trees. And for, uh, for potassium, I use potassium sulphate, which is a more farm friendly type. That's my compost tea brews. I, uh, I love to brew my own compost teas. I also brew the trichoderma and breed them. I, I really love to, um, I make all my own things. That's how I, I stir up. I, I use some liquid fish and some kelp and some uh, fulvic acid and I went to Bunnings and I bought a $20 drill and stuck it in the top and that's how I mix them all up, put them all in the tree and I go down and I spray them out of my tree. I use molasses as a sticking agent, also fun, uh, feed for, food for the bacteria. There's my sprayer. After, um, when I changed from conventional farming to biological farming, we uh, doubled our yield in the first year and halved our fertiliser cross and with the money I was able to buy this $20,000 U-Butte spray unit. That's my, how we pick up our farms. The other part of biological farming is a full paradigm shift. When we bought the farm and I bought all the old farmer's machinery, he used to use macadamia finger wheel uh, harvesters to pick up pecan nuts. Well, that's okay for macadamias, but pecan nuts, we shake our trees. We shake the nuts out of the tree. They all fall on the ground along with stick and about six inches of uh, leaf. So the finger wheels don't work in the leaf and that's why we used the herbicide spray so we could blow all the leaf out of the pickup zone. A paradigm shift, we had to change our whole way of thinking. We got rid of our finger wheel harvesters and we bought in proper pecan nut harvesters from America. They've been using them for years. Those, peak, those harvesters I bought from Graves Plantations, they're over 30 years old, hadn't been used. That's how they used to pick up macadamias in the initial. Well, it picks up all, in six inches of uh, leaf, uh, grass, as you can see, throws all the leaf and the sticks out the back and the nuts go into a bin. How good's that? Now that's what, the f what we're trying to get the farm to look like. We're encouraging ground covers to grow. That's my clover crop in the, in the, in the winter. And um, we're trying, we're trying. It's, ve it's very difficult to get grass to grow back in those herbicide strips that have been herbicided for over 30 years. But we're having, having some success. Every time I go down the farm, whether it be summer or winter, uh, whether I'm putting out potassium sulphate in the fertiliser spreader, I put out clover seed. Doesn't matter. It's cheap, seven bucks a kilo, you get thousands of seeds. And this is what I call my root friendly zone. In, uh, uh, we, as you've seen with our harvester, you, we drive up the, really close to the sides of the trees, but we don't do so much in the middle of the rows. And now I'm planting clovers and sorghums and uh, lab labs and all these nitrogen fixes and fungal foods and lig, uh, try, lignans trying to, feed the, uh, trying to feed the trees in the middle of the rows. So instead of, instead of having these dead zones in the middle of the roads, now I've got what I call my root friendly zone and that's the Japanese woofer that was helping us for a while. There's our, there's our clover growing in the, in the middle of the rows. Um, a lot of that knowledge come from Dave Forrest and I thank you for that, Dave. We got ourselves a little, little nursery. One year we, we had a uh, hailstorm that wiped our crop out so we were growing a few trees to, uh, to, to replant our, uh, make our farm a little bit bigger so we had to sell them. So we turned that year from a negative to a positive. Now we've got a thriving little nursery business. We've got a 10,000 tree nursery on the farm now. There's our root friendly zone up the middle of the rows. As you can see, that, uh, the roots of a pecan nut tree are as far out into the row as they are high. So we don't need it all to grow right next to the root, uh, the, the stump of the tree. We can grow them out in the middle of the rows. I made that myself, that's called a bugdenator. <laughs> My son reckons it's what the Romans should use to roll down the hills to kill all the, all the people. <laughs> okay, well that's just about it there. Some of my favourite tools, my 12 foot slasher, my old Fiat, and uh, what really is a very handy, useful tool is a zero turn on. 
whether it be organic or biological, that, uh, that saves us from uh, do, using any sort of herbicide. The only herbicide we use is to spot spray around the small trees now. We're now looking at, um, we're now looking at sh uh, sheep on the farm uh, once the trees get up a little bit higher. 2000, uh, that's 09, that's my little daughter and that's what the farm now looks like. So <coughs> that's some, one of my favourite pecan nut trees that are split in half on a big storm so I bolted it back together again. I've still got it. Okay, well that'll do anyway, that's the bits and pieces and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.